It's, it's crazy. It's crazy. Try it again. <laughs> so it is <laughs> always a party of patchworks. Let's get this party started. Woot, woot. You just never know what kind of party we're going to have now, do you? Never. We never, ever know. <laughs> so welcome to our Must So TV tonight. I think we went live about 20 minutes ago trying to figure out this whole sound thing because something happened tonight that hasn't happened before and we're trying to figure out all sorts of new technology. So thank you for joining us and I promise it will be a lot of fun and it could be a little crazy because you just never know. So tonight we have our free spirit club and we aren't going to have an overhead tonight so i'm just going to show you some exciting things and that's going to kind of make our demo a little bit interesting that i had today so well we'll just see how we go because you know we're just having fun so what we're going to do tonight especially because you know it's all kind of nine kinds of crazy we still are going to have a drawing tonight how does that sound so if you want to make sure that you comment and share and Tammy is giving me the what is happening so we are going to have a really fun drawing today and it is going to be for let me show you what it's going to be for it is going to be the best, 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 best giveaway ever. We are going to do one Fat 8 pack of Tim Holtz Halloween fabric. Frank is like, what is happening? We're giving away the world. So we're just going to have lots of fun because it's crazy. And we're happy that you're here with us. So Bobby's excited. I can see that comment already. So today we have some new fabrics that we're going to share with you for our Fat Quarter Club options. And let me just grab them from over on the side. We have for our stack options, we have this 12 pack of lotus leaf right that's lotus leaf i think i believe so it is uh all 12 different colors of saturday stash which is really really fun and i love where we can play with one fabric in different colorways so that is one of our options so if this is your first time tuning in we have Fat Eighth and Fat Quarter bundles that we show you every single month that you can do fun stuff with. So that is option one. Option number two, since we had the black and white last month with CAFE and then with mixed uh, designers last month, we brought the Tula pack. So that is super fun. We have all of the original black and whites and we are super excited that we are sharing 
black and white fabrics with you. Okay. Just changing up some lights here because we kind of changed our setup a little bit. You know, you never know what's going to happen. And then my favorite pack is a curated Halloween pack that I put together. So it has a combination of Tula solids, Tula blenders. We have your mineral. We have our tiny stripe. We have our tiny dot. We have a solid. And then we have from the Daydreamer collection, we have two, the Jaguar, and then this really, really pretty one here. And then we have the Rachel, Rachel Hauer and we have her Halloween lines in here. So I mixed those up. So we had sort of a nod to Halloween because it's just that time of year. It's spooky season. And I was thinking that for those of you who bypassed the Halloween offering for the full collection that we had from Rachel, because maybe it was just a little too scary, maybe this gives you another option, especially, especially, especially with these super, super cute spider webs. They're cute. So very, very fun. Okay, and then, well, you know, I showed you that Tim Holtz. So we do have a Tim Holtz offering. So this one's not a new offering, but I told everyone here that I told Heidi, I'm like, Heidi, you got to make up some Halloween packs because, well, it's Halloween season. So we have this Tim Holtz, which includes the Warren Croc and um, his eclectic elements here. So really, 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 really fun. So I hope one of those is super exciting to you. If you are playing along with the toes in the sand, we have your packs available for pickup. And this month, the Ooh, and Heidi did something super exciting. That you're going to be excited about. Okay, so these are the blocks for, oops, I see what she did. Okay, thinking that we were going to have an overhead. Okay, so these are the two blocks that we have. And I'm going to go through next week how we're going to sew the partial seam. She left this partial seam open for me to show you. And it's really not that hard. Julie Herman also had a sew along video on her sew along page. So if you were super excited and wanted to see her in action, putting this block together, I think she made that go live on Tuesday. So you'd be able to look at that and then I will show you how to sew that together next week thursday when we do our block of the months but just know that we have your toes in the sand packs together for this month and the thing that i think heidi wanted to share with me is that there was enough fabric in these maybe correct me if I'm wrong, um, to actually go ahead and make two of each of these this month, which is super exciting if you were going ahead and making that queen size quilt where you need to make double the amount of blocks. Sometimes you're able to get all of those out and sometimes you need to get a little bit more fabric to make both sets of blocks. But in this case, you have all of them. So as I said, I will step out when it is a little bit easier for me to hold these for you to go through how you would make this particular block where you have that partial seam that you'll zip up at the end. So, so I'm just going to make you watch again. So how many of you uh, watch all the time? Yay! All of you, woot, 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 woot. Uh, so we do have exciting content or crazy content. I can't always say, you know, it's always a party. You just never know what kind, right? That's That's been our slogan here at Patchworks for a really, really long time. And um, 
we have uh, been doing our Thursday nights. And then we also added in this crazy fun sew along that I'm doing. And since we're talking about free spirit, I thought I would mention it. So with Tula, because you know, we love Tula. We love lots of other designers too. We are doing the butterfly quilt. And what we are doing is I'm actually bringing you home with me and we're going down to my sewing room and then you're sewing with me and we're sewing parts of this quilt. So we're attacking it block by block by block and you're actually seeing it in real time. There's a little bit of it that I've shown that is a demonstration, but for the most part, it's just hanging out. We had a session last night where we were working on the... Oh, the chunky blocks, the chunky blocks. Like right here they are. They're so pretty. Look at them. They're so cute. And um, these right here were, oh, it's the chunky cross. It's a chunky cross. So these teeny tiny little blocks, which are just like candy that we worked together. That was lots and lots of fun. And so we made these, I made all of these together. And I know some of we made one complete one in an hour, but everything else was cut. And then I think by the hour 45, we had, um, we had the hour 45, we had gone ahead and we had finished all of them. So Kathy wanted to know if the butterfly quilt sew along is going to be back on Wednesday as I had promised, or is it going to stay on Wednesday nights? So Kathy, my intention is for most of the time for it to be on Tuesdays. And if for some reason I can't make it, I want to make my commitment to you that I'm going to, for as many weeks as possible, go live and sew with you. We'll talk about those weeks ahead of time when I can't sew with you. So like the week that I'm going to be at market is probably going to be really hard for sewing. That's at the end of October. And then as we get into the holiday season, we might also have to take some little bit of breaks. But otherwise, it is my intention to go on Tuesday night. And if we have to go a different night, I'll just make sure that on that Tuesday, I post up our link event of when we're actually going live. After we had our meeting yesterday, a couple of the members recommended that we actually try some Zoom interaction on that as well. So we are going to see if we can incorporate Zoom into it for next week. And since we started it on Facebook and YouTube, I want to make sure that we can stay on Facebook and YouTube. And if we can add Zoom to the mix so that we can have a little bit more interaction, we will. And um, well, we'll just see how it goes. Technology is always fun. <laughs> The first block that we had done was the intersection block. I just want to show you that. And the cool thing, if you're not familiar with this particular quilt, is that it's a sampler quilt where it really is appropriate for a beginner sewer or a more advanced sewer. But uh, with the different sizes of the blocks that you're putting together into an irregularly set sampler, you'll have a lot of opportunity for learning. And it's really great because you're going to really learn to hone that quarter inch seam so that everything goes together really, really nice. So really exciting. Hope you can join us along the way. If you are seeing this and you're like, you know, I'm thinking about it. Uh, I don't know. Uh, we have a few of you who just picked up the book. Frank ordered a bunch more books. Um, and I know Linda is playing along with us and she just has been collecting Tula now for a few years. So she's coming in every month and I'm helping her pick out what fabrics that she wants to use for her blocks to be able to still get that rainbow setting. And someone else had come in today and said, you know, I just want to, I just want to sign up right now. Do you have a kit? Well, guess what? Yes, 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 we do have kits. So we put kits together that have everything that you need for the front and the binding. The book is extra and the pattern would work with either this version 
or the original version of the pattern. It does include that background, and which is whimsy. The other thing with Tula that I wanted to share is that we do have Aurifil color 2835, which is that same whimsy color that is Tula's neutral color. We have that back in stock on the large as well as the small spools. So let us know if you need your spool. I am keeping everything all together in my little zebra project pouch, which is also Tula, and we have those in stock. Any questions about any of that? None so far. All right. So speaking of all sorts of new things, the uh, we I'm super excited. I'm heading down to Houston, at least hopefully I'm heading down to Houston at the end of the month to go to the first quilt market. Yay! Since 2019. Super, super, super exciting. And with that, um, we have, um, so with, with the quilt market that's coming, there are a lot of great things that we're looking at. Now, with it being the first quilt market since 2019, the manufacturers have already started releasing the new fabrics that they'd be showing us. So everything I'm seeing there isn't necessarily going to be a surprise kind of marketing from them has worked a little differently. So you're going to be seeing at the same time that I'm seeing all of the great market releases, be it from Free Spirit or any of our other favorite companies. So you might have seen that Tula has some amazing Everglow neon fabrics. And this week she's doing a whole series of videos talking about the origin story of that fabric line. And so if you love to watch her story tell and share different things, I invite you to watch those videos. The other fun thing that she's coming out with this spring of 2023 is a white background of the fairy dust. So I'm super excited about that. And the fairy dust is this print here, the one that has the bird and the little stars. So we have that in a whole range of colors. We'll continue to carry all of the basic colors, but I'm super excited that she released. There is going to be a white background of that. And she also has some true colors wide backs that are going to be coming out. I think Tim Holtz has some new fabrics. Cave has some new fabrics, all sorts of really great things. You tune in as well and you let me know uh, if there's certain things that you like, whether it be from Free Spirit or any other manufacturer, so that we can bring in a beautiful collection of fabrics. All right. Before we get into our little project that I want, I'm going to show you, I want to share with you another fabric that came in that is new, new, new this month. Actually, I have a couple new things. Um, and this one here, which is from Birds of a Feather, this is Rachel Hauer. So that is the designer that did those beautiful, or not beautiful, those spooky Halloween fabrics. Is this really blurry? It's a little blurry. Okay. Frank, can you help out on that side? So there's a dial closer to the backside, not that one. So um, there's two dials on that. That one, and then there's one back. There we go. That's a little better. Much better. Thank you so much, Frank. Thank you. So this here, um, these loons, I just love the loons. So we didn't get the whole fabric line, but I love the loons, and I thought this was really, really stunning. The colors um, with this background here, it is, oh, and Barb gave it a thumb. Oh, everybody's giving it a thumbs up. Thank you, Frank, for the focus, for the focus. All right. And thank you everyone for um, being with us and helping us while we are adjusting. I think you had heard last week that the setup we'd used for the past two years uh, decided to become obsolescent overnight. So always fun and exciting to play with different things. So this, um, these loons are really cool. I got these because, well, 
I love the loons and I think that they're just really amazing birds. And that is why we got that particular one, even though it kind of is just out of nowhere. I thought it kind of also blends with the Charlie Harper fabrics that we have in stock right now. So enjoy that. And then we have in a whole variety of new K facet fabrics. So you'll be seeing some of these in, in some of our future club packs. I did have the lotus flower for this month. So that's why we aren't doing all of the cape all of the time. Um, we do have beautiful things on yardage. So this is from the August 2022 collection. I'm just going to grab you a couple bolts so that you can see the great fabrics here. So really, really pretty. I love as well the plaid that came out. Oh my goodness. Just all sorts of yummy fabrics. See, this is the fun thing about being on this side of the store is I could just run and run away and find all sorts of great stuff to bring back to you. So isn't that cool? Oh, it's so fun. And then we have some fun stripes, some great paisleys. So um, the cave that we get right now, we're sticking to that bright, bold color story of being more of those jewel colors, the reds, fuchsias, oranges, bright greens, bright blues. He has a whole, um, I mean, a whole range of different colors to choose from. And since we can't have it all, I mean, I would love to have it all and maybe someday we would. Um, we could, but I just otherwise want to have a tighter color story so that things go together. And that if you're going to be making a cave quilt from what we have right here, uh, that you have a great selection to choose from. So I hope that you are drawn to those beautiful, bright, bold colors as I am. All right. So now, let's see. So we have, we talked about the new, new, new that is coming out for everybody to see. And that's really exciting. We talked about our new butterfly quilt, quilt along that we're doing. And then we talked about our toes in the sand. Now what I'm going to do is I'm going to show you or try to show you a fun little project that we uh, were working on. And Frank, what I think we're also going to do is that I'm going to ask you at some point to then tilt that camera down. Okay, makes sense? All right, perfect. So inspired by, well, of course, we're inspired by Halloween because, well, it's just spooky season. And this particular piece of fabric, I don't know if I showed it to you when it came in, but this is a focus piece from the Rachel Hauer line, right? And it looks like a crazy quilt, right? And that bright, vibrant green is just so exciting. And then you have the stitches there and just some kind of spooky, scary things too. And then as I've been floating around the web, I've seen some really exciting things with reverse applique. And I thought, you know, what might be fun and what we haven't done here is work with some reverse applique. How does that sound? Okay. So what I did is I blew up the that pumpkin okay the pumpkin or the little jack-o-lantern here so i took this guy do you see him right here uh this guy i took that guy and i put him on the copy machine and i made it giant and then i cut out that piece of paper and i made it as big as i could and then i traced it and i had this okay so it's a very, 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 um, well, it's just, it's just the outline. It's just the outline of the jack-o'-lantern there. And it has the essence of the spirit of the design that's in the fabric. Now you could take literally any design, you, any simple shape that you wanted. You could do bats, you could do witches hats, you could do oh, all sorts of stuff. 
but I thought that this wasn't too spooky, right? It's not too spooky because sometimes bots can be spooky. So it's not too spooky. And so um, this is what I thought we'd do. So there's a couple different ways you can do it. And I'm going to share with you the tools that can help you along the way. So if you are a member of our Free Spirit Club, this particular piece of paper is going to be included in your club pack. If you were interested in it, uh, and you're not a club member, you can also come in and ask, and we'd be more than happy to give you this piece of paper, which has this on it. Or you could be adventuresome, and you could just draw any single shape that you had wanted in your entire life and have fun with it. I would recommend, if you've never done this before, to have a simpler shape. So to transfer to fabrics, you would want to use... Um, some marking utensils. What I did here, since I actually transferred to a black fabric, okay, which makes it really super hard, is that I cut the shape out, okay, for one of the ways that I'm going to show you. I cut the shape out and then I traced around it. And when you're tracing around it and you're using black, you'd want to use something light. I happen to use the white ceramic lead pencil from Soline, as it's one of my very, very favorite sewing utens or, um, marking utensils out there. Other great marking utensils that we carry in the store, we have the Clover, and this is the white fine marking pen. We have the white Chocopel fine, which actually comes in a variety of different things, but this is the Clover version of the chalk pencil. And then we have a water soluble pencil. All very fun, fine options that you can choose. So traced it on and then went ahead and um, used it in our in our project. I kind of skipped ahead here in um, the different and uh, the different uh, method that we're going to be using. So what I did with the reverse applique is that we started with a keist base. Okay, so this was two and a half inch strips. You could use any, I think it actually could be super interesting if you used irregular piecing. We just did something very symmetrical, very basic, so that it seemed uh, simpler to follow. So we took two and a half inch strips for our particular piece and sew that together in a fun little square. Next up, we took a square of black fabric, just like this. And Frank, I'm going to have you see if you can rotate that down. We apologize if it's a little jerky of fabric here or jerky of positioning. Okay. And my sew line ceramic lead pencil happens to be um, a little bit older version, but it's the same, that's what's in there. So you could position wherever you'd like, and then we are just drawing like this. Do, 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 do. And when I'm tracing like this, I like to rotate my piece so that my hand is like in the same position, okay? I have said before that when we are tracing things, we have a natural arc and it's easier to have this, I'm showing you right-handed here. So it's like this overhand arc rather than trying to go like that, okay? So sometimes I still do that, but in general, having this overhand works for a much smoother line. Why don't you use a glue pen to hold it down? Okay, so Frank wants to know why am I not using a glue pen to hold it down? And you know what, Frank? That'd probably be a really great idea. So Frank has great ideas, and instead of pinning it down um, or holding it down, you could back it with a glue stick. And my favorite glue stick is the Sew Line fabric glue stick, which has a refill. It's the glue stick for adults, and we'll be using that in just a moment. Or you could use any other 
uh, water-soluble temporary adhesive glue stick. So let's see what it looks like. Can you see it's a very faint light? Let's just hold it up for you. Maybe you can see that light kind of-ish. Oh, there you go. That sweet spot, there we go. Okay, so it's a shadow. It's a shadow of a line, but it's there and I have it centered. So what we're going to do is that I'm going to put this behind to get this to look like this. Okay, so I'm putting it behind like this and like this. You could put it vertically. You put, If you were a fabric efficient, you probably could put a piece of fabric that was smaller behind, but well, we just wanna be super generous, right? Super generous. And so what you do is you could pin, 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 and then sew on your line, okay? That will then look like this. So here I had Heidi sew our line and with a white thread so that you could see it, okay? Did you see that? All right, now what we're going to do is we are going to use a scissor to cut it. And I think Frank's hunting down a scissor for me. So my favorite scissors are the Karen K. Buckley scissors. So I can use that one. So I'm not going to use the one I'm showing you. I'm just going to use a different scissor. Um, but this is my favorite, 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 the Karen K. Buckley perfect scissors. Both the large and the medium are super nice. And the thing that I like about it here are these handles and I must have left it at home in my home sewing area. So that's why I don't have it here today. You know, I just need triplicates of everything that I own so that we can have them everywhere. And so we have the small, medium and large. Now the pink handle is super awesome. And this would be for a large multi-purpose. This would be what you'd wanna use for cutting your paper, okay? These you use for your fabric. This you can use for your paper, okay? All right, so I'm going to use this scissors. And this is one method. If you wanted it to not be as um, visible, you could have used black thread, um, especially for what we're doing. We wanna make sure that it is visible. So what we're going to do is I'm actually going to cut in between these two layers. So do you see here, I have, I have this right side up, okay? So I am going to very, very carefully, I'm gonna separate this, okay? I'm gonna cut in the middle. Now I would be more fabric efficient if I were doing this at home and not in front of you, but I wanna make sure that I don't cut my back, which I'm sure you all appreciate. Okay, so what I'm doing here is I'm cutting close to the edge, but we are leaving a little bit and so it can be a little raggy here, okay? So this is one of the methods that you can use for this reverse applique and you can see how this could be super fun to play with getting some really exciting stuff in the back, okay? I had actually done a reverse applique. Am I doing this all right, Frank? Um, I had done this on a design. I had taken an embroidery class many moons ago. And so there was a digitized outline that was stitched for me. And then I just got to remove the inside fabric. And if you cut it close, like I'm doing here, you can actually use the fabric for something else. And you want to be super sure that your point gets underneath, especially as you get to the intersections here. Like, so here, I was cutting and it's right on that seam. Okay, it's right on that seam here. So I wanna make sure that my, the tip of my, the tip here doesn't get stuck.
All right. Oh, Frank. <laughs> <laughs> you never know what you're going to hear here at Patched Works. Never know. All right, so here we go. Almost done. What you can do with the leftover here is that you can use it to trace. Um, Frank, I'm going to have you grab the fusible web adhesive from the wall there. Okay. And I'm not picking it up, this up. So if I were doing this in my sewing room, I would actually have this in my hand so that it would be easier to work. I'd have it like this. And I was just trying to cut like this so that you could see it a little better. Da, da, da. Okay, so here we go. Look at that, super cute. I'm going to use, so hand them both over. Hand them both over. So we have the Steam -a Seam Light 2 and the Wonder Under. My favorite, leave it down. My favorite is the Steam -a Seam 2. And what I'm going to do is I am just going to quick grab a little bit of this. Can I have a paper scissors from right underneath there, Frank? Thank you. Just going to cut off a tiny, tiny bit here. The thing that I like about the Steam -a Seam 2 is that it has a tacky property even without heat. So what we're going to do is that I'm going to grab my shape here. And I want a pen from right there. No pen. So I have a pen. We can also use a marker, which I had right here. I'm just going to trace this. I'll just trace one here. Now, the other thing that we could have done, which I'm not going to attempt tonight because I'm thrown off a little bit by technology, is to have um, a more advanced version. But I really want to show you that. So I'm going to not do that under this setup, but I want to show you a different way to do that of doing a fancier way. Fancy. And I'm not turning this, I'm just being crazy because I'm using my hands to then. So I'm not turning this because it is, I'm just sketching this here and I'm going to use my scissors to smooth out my corners. Okay. Da, 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 da. All right, so um, you can use any fusible web adhesive product. I like this because it, and you see here how I'm turning, I'm turning the paper. Okay, can you see it or do I need to move my hands over here? Probably need to move my hands a little bit more. Can you see this better, kind of? Working at a different angle here tonight. And those are my eyes. Now I'm going to get my nose. Now you see here that it gummed up a little bit. Um, I got a little bit goopy, a little pen goopy there. So before you start working on a giant project, you'll want to make sure that whatever marking utensil that you use isn't going to leave you goopies. Because the goopies, I know that's a really technical term, the goopies are going to transfer to your fabric and like if you're using a white background, oh, you would be so sad. So oftentimes I do use a marker like the Sharpie that I didn't happen to see sitting next to me. Um, but you know, I wanted to have a teachable moment to be able to share with you 
that perhaps using a ballpoint pen isn't the best when transferring your design onto fusible web adhesive. How does that sound? It was planned. <laughs> Teachable moment. Okay, so now you see how I kind of drew that kind of crazy. So I'm just going to use my scissor to smooth it out because I can. And the thing that I liked about Rachel's original design is that there were more curves rather than these rough edges. So I'm just kind of leaving the curves here. All right. Linda doesn't buy my teachable moment, but see how that smeared right there and got on the back of my thumb? So it smeared, the smeared. It's smeared. Isn't that a word? It's smeared. The Wisconsin word. Wisconsin. It's always a party at Patrick's. You just never know what kind. Okay, so here we go. Now what we can do. Let's see, where am I? Da, da, da. Okay, so we can go here. Here. Here here right does that sound good yay so what we would do i just wouldn't put sticky stuff right so oh what did i do you know i just <laughs> no one stopped me no one stopped me okay what's wrong with this picture okay wait wait tammy what was that Oh my goodness. So Tammy was me. <laughs> so everybody wanted me to just have all of the teachable moments today. Okay, so Okay, so here's here's the deal. Oh my goodness. I think we should just like totally start this all over. Okay. No fabric exactly. Okay, so Okay, moral of the story, I think <laughs> Frank's gonna have a heart attack. I just know it. So what you would do is you take this and you'd fuse it on the back, right? You'd fuse it on the back. Then what you do is you cut this out. So if you've ever done this before and you're like, this is how we should do it. We don't want to do that. So, and why don't we want to do that? Because, well, it's really, really hard to put this on and then take it off. I'm not going to redo it while we're talking just because, well, you guys have been a great studio audience tonight and um, it just hasn't gone quite as planned. Sure, I can unpeel. So she wants to know if I can just unpeel it. So I absolutely can. And what we do when we unpeel it, okay, so it has a tacky part, we can put it on the back side. And if let's say this was a crazy intricate something or other, you absolutely could sew this here. And then cut. Okay. And then the thing about it here, do you see how I am? Like if you make an oopsie because, well, you know, it's not like I've never appliqued before, but you see, I'm getting a little bit of that edge in there. So my, my applique size is going to be just a little bit smaller. Okay. And then we're going to peel this off. Da, da, da. Recovery. Yay. Okay. And then you tack that on. <gasps> Ah, so pretend we did that here and here and here. Okay, let's just pretend. Isn't that cute? It's super cute. It's super cute. And Sharon, I love it. See, it is super cute just as a pumpkin. The other thing you can do with it is that you can use your aura floss, which is that um, six strand floss, right? Six strand, six strand and do some embellishment here where you could put in some lines or you could stitch in uh, a face or you could put, you could embroider boo on it. That could be just lots of, lots of fun. <gasps> uh, 
So, or just like this could be super fun. Now with this particular project, if we flip it over, you'll see that you have a back side that is the full size. You would be able to trim out this extra fabric if you wanted to be fabric efficient, or you could just leave it as is to put into your project. Now, if you were going to be turning this into a pillow or a tote bag, you may want to go ahead and just leave that as lining so that you don't have to add a different layer. So now that I showed you all of the things, oh, and Kathy, I love it. She says, if you leave it without a face, it'll be good for Halloween, fall, and Thanksgiving. Oh, thanks, Kathy. Good save. Good save. So, what other questions do we have on this fun project? All right, so we'll get back in focus here. And thank you, Tammy, for sharing the uh, link. So we share just in one big blob or in a few blobs, all the different notions that I did share with you today. The other thing I didn't share with you is that if you were doing a different method of stitching down that pumpkin, you could also take advantage of using our monofilament invisible thread. And we have it available in both clear and smoke. And we carry the Oracle brand currently. The smoke would be something I would use on this project here because that smoke thread has that great tint to it. And the reason why you'd use smoke monofilament on a black background is that you wouldn't have that glare. So when you, while, you know, if you only have this one, you can use this on everything. Being able to switch between the two will give you just that extra finish where you don't have as much shine on your block. All right. Whew. So you want to use um, your, so Kathy, the questions for your applique needles, it would be based on the thread that you are using. Okay. So, um, and not all monofilament threads are created equal. So when you're in the shop buying your thread, I will be more than happy to help you select the proper needle for that. Uh, we also do have a whole uh, a whole session with Rhonda Pierce from Schmetz Needles on our YouTube channel that goes over all of the different um, needles and thread combinations to use. But since we did talk about, since you brought up the notion of needle and this, one thing I do want you to keep in the back of your mind is that monofilament clear thread does not go in the bobbin, okay? You'll be very, very sad, very, very angry if you do not put it in the bobbin. All right. Very, very fun here. So I hope to see all sorts of reverse applique inspiration that you have. And um, this one here with the very, very basic, using just that straight stitch to... Um, have it be easy and go together super quick. Lastly, I want to share with you today. Um, we have this in, did we have Moon Garden in? We don't have Moon Garden in. No, no, no. Did we have it in Free Spirit Club? No. So if you haven't seen it yet. I have samples, <gasps> just samples until later this month of the gorgeous, gorgeous next Tula line called Moon Garden. So super exciting. We have all of the pieces on our website that are available for pre-order there. And I'm not going to go through all of them I just want you to know, and look at that, isn't that pretty? It's so pretty. And I love how it looks in this light. So when you look at it up, up close, it doesn't have the rainbow effect, but then when you look at it here, it shimmers really nicely. And 
oh, I want to grab a piece of fabric to share with you. Okay, I'm grabbing a piece of fabric because I can. Look at this. Look at this. Oh my gosh. Oh, isn't that cool? That's really cool. So you can just play with it. You can play with all of the things. Okay, so, huh. All right, so that is, we have that moon garden that's going to be coming. We'll let um, you know the instant it, hit our, it hits our shelves. Actually, I'll probably let you know when it's in transit um, because it's just so exciting. And this particular fabric line is going to fly fast. We got a lot and I put extra fabric on back order as well. But let us know if you had been someone who wanted yards and yards of it so that we can allocate that for you sooner than later because it's going to go quick and we have always great fabric coming all of the time. Do we have any questions tonight? All right, I'm going to do a quick recap of the fabrics and then we're going to do our drawing for that Tim Holtz Fat 8th pack. <gasps> How exciting! I know a few of you are wanting some of this uh, gorgeous Tula fabric, but I'm going to have to wait just a couple more weeks. All right, so let me grab those to share with you. So, speaking of Tim Holtz, we will have this great Tim Holtz option for you. We have the super spooky Tula and Rachel combo that we used for our super fun reverse applique. We have the classic Tula line work. And then we have the always classy lotus flowers by cave all right oh my goodness look at all these names <laughs> so exciting so exciting all right so think lucky think lucky one of you is going to win and thank you so much for tuning in tonight we do go live every thursday and Who we got today? Did Frank draw? I think Frank should draw. Come on, Frank. We'll see Frank's hand. You can see it. Okay, just grab one. Grab one. <gasps> and the lucky winner is <gasps> Deb. Deb Wagonet. Congratulations. Yay. So thank everyone for tuning in. We hope you had a great time. Happy quilting, and we'll see you soon.